Okay, so without using a calculator, can you figure out this math problem right here? Well, I believe most of you could figure this out, but uh, the question is, can you figure this out using two separate ways? Again, we're not going to be using our calculators. And let me go ahead and explain the question. Of course, we can see it, but just in case you're not quite sure what the question is, we have two squared plus two to the third power, two cubed, plus two to the fourth power, plus two to the fifth power. We want to get this down to one single value. And uh, if you can do this, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section and uh, maybe uh, talk about the different techniques or the one technique that you know how to do this problem with. I'm going to show you the right answer in just one second. And then, of course, I am going to uh, uh, solve this problem using two separate techniques that I think most of you should be kind of at least thinking about if you are at a certain level of mathematics. Uh, I'll talk more about that in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's just go ahead and take a look at the right answer right now. Uh, again, I'll show you two approaches, and there's probably uh, one approach that most of you took, which is the easiest approach. Then I'm going to show you, of course, another completely different way to look at this problem. But uh, the correct answer is, uh, is 60. All right. So if you got that right, that is fantastic. Again, I'm not judging uh, whether you did it the easy way, hard way, or whatever method. The bottom line is if you didn't use a calculator and you got 60, that is definitely cause for celebration. So let's go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars. So you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in the area of powers and exponents. Uh, your family really won't know what that means. But it just sounds so cool to be like, wow, just keep up the great math work. And you'll be like, yes, yes, indeed. I get smarter every day because I watch this guy on YouTube. He's amazing, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Now, if you didn't get this right, no problem. This is not that difficult. And let's go ahead and get started now by um, actually looking at the easiest way to do this problem. Okay. Now, the first thing we need to understand is what does uh, you know these little um, things right here mean? Okay, now I'm kind of assuming that most of you uh, know what 2 squared or 2 cubed mean, but maybe some of you don't, so let's just kind of review this. Okay, so 2 squared means take 2 and multiply it by itself 2 times, so that's 2 times 2. So 2 cubed means take 2 and multiply it by itself uh, 3 times, so that's 2 times 2 times 2. 2 to the 4th, you kind of get the idea right here, right, is take 2 and multiply it by itself four times and two to the fifth means a take two and multiply it by itself five times okay so if you just you know have basic multiplication uh, skills you would handle all this multiplication first remember the order of operations we have to handle multiplication before addition or uh, exponents powers before additions so that's kind of the main idea here but in terms of um, evaluating these powers and exponents uh, they're pretty straightforward numbers, so you can just be like, oh, 2 times 2, I know what that is, 2 times 2 times 2, hopefully you can figure that out, and let's go ahead and actually see kind of the easiest approach to do this. Of course, you need to understand what, you know, what a power and exponent is, and I just kind of explain that, right? All right, so 2 squared is 2 times 2. Of course, I hope you know that that is 4. 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2, so 2 times 2 is 4 times another 2 is 8. All right, so how about 2 to the 4th? That is 16. So that's 2 times 2, which is 4, right? And then a 2 times 2 again, that's another 4. 4 times 4 is 16. And then 2 to the 5th is uh, basically 2 to the 4th times another 2, right? So that's 16 times 2, or 32. Okay, so now what we're going to do is simply take all of these numbers right here and add them up. And when we add up uh, 4 plus 8, uh, plus 16 to 32, you're going to get 60. Okay, so this is the easiest approach, and quite frankly, if you were asked to just answer this question without the aid of a calculator, you would do uh, you would do it this way, and you would, of course, uh, get the answer of 60.
Now, some of you might be saying, well, hey, why are you asking me to uh, solve this using another method? Isn't it good enough just to answer the question correctly? Yes, indeed, but uh, this is a good little prom to um, explore something very important in mathematics, especially when you see powers, okay, which we have right here. Uh, and uh, there is some sum. So uh, this is kind of a, uh, you know, a, um, a problem that I'm hoping you can identify some patterns, all right? So some of you might be saying, I'm totally lost, no problem. I'm going to show you what I mean right now. But before I do that, I am going to ask you to subscribe to my channel if you have not yet subscribed. And when you do, make sure to hit that notification button. This really does help me and help my channel, okay? Uh, and, you know, helps that YouTube algorithm. My objective is to reach as many uh, people as possible. Uh, you know, math is one of these things that, unfortunately, so many people struggle in. It doesn't have to be that way. 99% of the reason why people have a tough time in mathematics is because the instruction that they receive is, in my opinion, uh, a little bit like over technical. Okay, the way I try to teach math is a clear and understandable way. So if you like my instruction, this really does help. And by the way, if you're new to my channel, you'll find 2,000 plus videos from basic math to advanced math and calculus. All that's there for you, and of course, everything in between. Okay, so back to the problem. Okay, so one way you could look at this problem here is to factor out the greatest common factor, all right? So here you might be saying, what is this guy talking about, GCF? I don't want to do this using a GCF. You might be like, ah, I'd just rather do it the easy way. Well, this is important because if I uh, change these twos to like a variable like X, okay, you, of course you would have to kind of approach this problem in a different way, all right? So what I'm kind of showing you here is a uh, simplified version of, of a problem you could see in algebra. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how we could factor out the greatest common factor and do this problem in a completely different approach. All right, so what is the GCF? Well, it is the greatest common factor. Okay, but let's go ahead and see what that actually means here. So 2 squared is the same thing as 1 times 2 squared. Okay, so that is the same thing as 2 squared, right? Now, 2 to the third power is 2 times 2 times 2. Now, we could think of that as 2 times 2 squared. Now, notice here, this first term, this first number, has a factor of 2 squared. Okay, when, when things are separated by multiplication, these are factors. Okay, this one also has a factor of 2 squared. Now, this entire thing is a 2 cubed. This only has 2 squared, so we're looking for the greatest common factor. So these two right here have a factor of 2 squared. How about 2 to the 4th? Well, uh, we could think of 2 to the 4th as 2 squared times 2 squared. Okay. So again, our uh, factor, our common factor of 2 squared is showing up. And then 2 to the 5th is the same thing as 2 cubed times 2 squared again. So if you look at the greatest common factor, they all have this factor right here, 2 squared, and it's the greatest uh, a factor that they possibly can have because over here, the highest power of 2 is 2 squared. Now, another observation here is if we notice that 2 cubed is the same thing as 2 to the first times uh, 2 squared, if you add the exponents, we get, get back here. And so the, when you're multiplying uh, two powers with the same uh, base, like here, 2 squared times 2 squared, you add these exponents, we get back to 2 to the 4th, or 2 cubed times 2 squared. You add these right here, you get back to 2 to the 5th. So I'm kind of um, you know showing you this approach because this would be the kind of the, the thinking you would need to um, uh, uh, have if you had a, um, an algebra problem. Again, if we weren't dealing with numbers and we were dealing with variables, okay? You need to understand the greatest common factor and you need to be able to uh, be able to, excuse me, uh, factor out the GCF. Okay, so now we're going to do something very interesting. So because we have uh, these great, this greatest common factor, okay, I can factor it out. In other words, I can put this right here, two squared, put parentheses, and this is an illustration of the distributive property. Okay, so I'll kind of walk through here. So without making this video too long, if you um, are struggling a bit uh, with what I'm saying, then you need to review the distributive property, factoring. Uh, so let me give you a couple quick suggestions. One, if you need help with like basic mathematics, uh, you know, if some of this basic stuff is kind of get to you, check out my um, Math Foundations course. I'll leave a description 
uh, uh, I'll leave a link to the in, in the description below. But uh, if you need help with powers and exponents, you may want to check out like my pre-algebra or algebra one course. Also, I have a ton of additional videos on factoring, uh, powers and exponents, etc., on my YouTube channel as well. Okay, but the main idea here is we want to factor out the GCF, and that is two squared. And we're going to use parentheses. And what remains? Okay, well let's go ahead and see. One is what remains right here. So that'll be that one right here. Two to the first remains in the second term. So there's our two here. Two to the fourth is what remains right here. Again, we factored out the GCF. And then two cubed remains right there. Okay, I know this is getting kind of busy. So let me kind of erase all this stuff right here. So I can kind of uh, make this point. If I took this two to the second and I multiplied back in, two to the second, I would end up right here plus 2 to the second times 2 is 2 to the third power, right? Or 2 to the first. 2 to the second times 2 squared gets me back to this situation, or 2 to the fourth. And 2 to the second times 2 cubed gets me back to 2 to the fifth, okay? So I factored out the greatest common factor. And now what I can do is simply just evaluate what's going on here. And I'm working with lower uh, powers of 2. Okay, so this can make my life a lot easier. So let's go ahead and actually do that right now. Okay, so again, we factored out the GCFs. 2 squared is 4, parentheses. So I got 1 plus 2 to the first, or 2, plus 2 squared. 2 squared is 4. 2 to the third is 2 times 2, which is 8. So now we just have 4 times 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8. Remember, order of operations, I have to do what's inside parentheses first. So 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 is what that is going to be 15 so we're down to 4 times 15 which of course hopefully all of you can see that that is 60. all right so this is a completely separate approach again this would be um kind of uh you know very very um, important if i had like x squared plus x cubed plus uh, x to the fourth power all over x squared okay one of the most common mistakes that students do in math is like, oh, I see an x squared here and an x squared here. I'll just cross cancel. Wrong, wrong, wrong. And you'll get many points off. Do not ever do that in mathematics. What you have to be, um, what you have to do here is you have to factor out this x squared. Okay. So you, know, you basically, again, we'd be uh, working with the GCF. So it'd be one plus x squared plus x, uh, x to the first, excuse me times x squared okay so you got to be um, really on the alert for opportunities where you can factor out the greatest common factor and of course you need to understand all these properties of uh, powers and exponents but uh, if you saw this second way to do this problem that is fantastic matter of fact uh, i would probably just give you like uh, maybe like i would give you more than 100 percent i'd give you like 150 percent an a plus plus matter of fact if you were in my math class i would just say just go home uh you know you could just take the rest of the year off i'll send you your grade in the mail okay so with all that being said i definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures thank you for your time and have a great day